should be podcasters one day. I know, right? That'd be a good idea. Might be something we could look into. Yeah. That'd be fun. <sighs> well, for you listening and joining us, you should jump over to our YouTube channel so you can see our new neon sign. Yeah. It you, is so cool. I love cool. it. You can see that I'm out of breath just from walking in from the <laughs> other room. <laughs> I'm winded. And getting your headphones out. (laughs) Well, welcome to joining Kim and I, Josh. Oh, yes. Because, no, Kim and I, we have that problem because we're bigger people. Mm -hmm. Oh, out of breath. Yeah, we get winded pretty easily. Yeah, but I was a smoker through all of my 20s, so it should be about the same. Oh, that's true. It doesn't help any. That's true. We're more of an elevator type of people (laughs) versus the stairs. Oh, my gosh, I know. Anytime I see a sign that's like... Elevator to the left or stair to the right. I'm like, shame to the left. Right. <laughs> Here we go. Hello. So what's funny is like anytime Kim and I go places, all the thin people will take the stairs and Kim and I are sitting there waiting on the elevator. <laughs> like, okay. We'll meet y'all down there. Yeah, we're I have not... a bad knee too, so that doesn't help. It's because we're fat, Kim. That's why we have bad Kim's knees. Kim's no, knees are bad for other reasons. No, that is not the reason. <laughs> I fell on it when I was pregnant with Emily oh. and it it's got arthritis in it really bad. Just sucks the life right out of you, children. Yeah. Oh, I know. I've known women pregnant. that their teeth have gotten brittle and like would fall out because no. the baby takes all the calcium. Yeah. If, Stuff they don't you tell you. If you would ya. take your prenatal vitamins, that wouldn't happen to you. Well, that's what she said, but we think it might have been something from a pipe mm-hmm. because she didn't have no teeth. Yeah, that's any exactly teeth. what that was. Sounds like a hot mess. Yeah. We're mm. like, I worked with her for years and... She's got them fixed, though. I saw. Thank you, Facebook. Oh, bless she got them heart. fixed. And if it was like she didn't do that when mm-hmm. I knew her, but everybody was just like, mm-hmm, prune, <laughs> I've never seen no other pregnant lady's <laughs> teeth crumble out of her face. Yeah, if yeah, you take prenatal awful. vitamins, it, yeah. That is, I think, one of the scariest things about women. And I always, anytime one of my female friends gets pregnant, it's scary because you can go from being a perfectly healthy woman and, and then, then you you're get pregnant, pregnant and <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> well, the baby could get sick. And then I know oh, countless yeah. women that when they get pregnant, like, oh, I have to spend the last six months of it in bed. So me and the yeah. baby don't die. Oh, I'm yeah. like, that's just I stuff was, they don't tell you. <laughs> I was really fortunate. I had really good pregnancies, both of the kids, and I didn't have any morning sickness at all. And I had a great pregnancy with both of them. And they were good babies. Usually, a lot of times, old wives' tales, you know, say if you have a easy pregnancy, then you're going to have a kid that Hectic screams baby. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right. But no, they were both good girls and or good babies, and I had good pregnancies. This comes out the day after Thanksgiving, I believe, or a few yeah. days after Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I am thankful for all women that give birth because <laughs> bless your hearts. Not only the pregnancy and the birth, but the after. A lot of them get depression. I don't know why we're on the subject. (laughs) Josh loves to talk about women. Postpartum depression is no joke. Oh, I know. No joke. I think it's my godson is about ready to turn 13, so I've been reminiscing Mm -hmm. about him as a a little baby and his mom pregnant, and she had an easy pregnancy for the most part. Good. Josh, you have mentioned the fear of being pregnant and stuff. Do you remember the time that you accidentally touched a woman's private part? I did with my toe. Yes. With my big toe. Bless, oh my gosh. How the crap did you do that? It was... Uh, Kim's interested. Whoops, how do, yeah, that's not, how a, that that's not really an her? oops thing. It was, uh, it was an oops thing. I accidentally tripped and... <laughs> no, no, I fell over. I accidentally tripped and prostituted myself. I mean. <laughs> Done that a time or two, have a weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's my $20? All right. (laughs) Just happened. Well, she was sitting on the floor Indian style, and it was one of mine and Shane's roommates when we had graduated high school. And I just went to go poke her, like, on her leg right there with my toe. And she, like, jumped or something, and my she went forward, and my toe went, and I, I towed her. (laughs) I told you. <laughs> that's how it happens, Kim. Isn't that how it happened to you? And yeah, that's exactly how I got pregnant. <laughs> both of us. You could be a daddy. Yeah. Well, both of us were equally as scarred. 
<laughs> she'd never been towed before and I'd never touched one before. So we were both just screaming. Josh, of course, was like, <laughs> She was too. Womanly parts. I needed uh. to cut my toenails, bless her heart. Oh, she's still recovering. No. <laughs> bless, oh my gosh. So I was making toast this morning, okay? And I don't know why I just transitioned to this, okay? Speaking it, of toey vaginas, no, I was yeah, making no, toast. Listen. I got to the subject because I look over at my tea and I just thought, man, I could use just a little snack to go with it. But as I'm waiting for it to cool down. And we just had lunch. Listen, need we snack. need a sweet. We just told people that Kim and I are a little overweight. We had salads for lunch. Yeah. Not according to our driver's license, though. My driver's license says that I'm thin. But anyway, yeah. I identify as thin. Anyway, listen, <laughs> I was having I was having some toast this morning. And I, you know, was waiting for my toast to come out of the uh, toaster. The toaster, yes. Words are difficult. <laughs> I would say. Listen, maybe we shouldn't be podcasters. Shane's my bless your heart for today. Right? <laughs> so I went over to my fridge and I got out a tub of butter. Right, and as I get ready to open it, I get this anxiety, thinking, "God, I hope this is butter." And not and of <laughs> course it was butter. And I laughed because when Josh and I were young and we lived at our grandma's house. If you opened the container of butter, there was more than one. Yeah, and it almost always was never butter, and like Left it was bacon like, grease. Yeah, it was always either Leftovers. bacon grease. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, and like it was that way. I don't know why, too. but like in the morning when you're like, oh, I'm gonna get some butter for my toast. Seeing like, cold spaghetti oh just really gosh. turns you off. <laughs> it, and it, yeah, so it's like traumatizing. You're just like, oh my gosh, what is this? You know, and like, oh my gosh, it's, it's leftover spaghetti or. Bacon grease, you know. It's 7 a.m. I don't want to say dinner food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I still have that anxiety. So it reminded me of being at Grandma's house. And I so I laughed at it because I thought that was so funny. Well, Grandma would wash her paper plates. Oh, I know. Not, you know, if it was, if she just made a sandwich, there's a couple crumbs. She'd yeah. rinse it off or she'd wash out her Ziploc baggies. Right. And then you got to put them over a cup yeah. so it air dries. Right. I still do that and the paper plate, I don't buy them anymore, but when I did, I rinse my stuff Rich. off. Rich. Rich. <laughs> no, it's more eco-friendly. I will get all the uses out of a Ziploc bag. No, I don't He's blame been waiting to say I that know. for me. Payback. I don't blame you about the Ziploc bags. Those things are expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, are. that plastic's going to be here for, yeah. you know, well, lifetimes. And the thing about Ziploc bags... Like, this is another public service announcement on the Mystery Morning Inc. show. Know. If you get the generic Ziploc bags, those are trash. I will not. Like, you have to. Yeah, it's like it's like toilet paper. Yeah. If you get generic toilet paper, throw your money in the trash. You might as well use it to wipe your butthole. Yeah. Because it's just not the same. Wait mm -hmm. a minute. Isn't toilet paper for your butthole? Yeah, but it's trash. You use it If you it wrong. use generic toilet paper, it's trash. If you don't use Charmin. Yeah. And I'm at your house. I know, Kim, you don't use Charmin. No, I don't. But you also don't make great life choices, okay? <gasps> How <laughs> dare you? When I'm at someone's house. I obviously, don't you hardcore. Obviously, you're my friend, so <laughs> Every pull down there. from that generic or oh, not Charmin gosh. toilet paper, not sponsored, by the way, but right. really, <laughs> every time I think, oh, they don't love themselves. No. <laughs> they don't love that, themselves. That's another thing that comes back from our grandma, too, because she would get, like, you know, the Charmin... And it would always be like real strong, the heavy duty yeah. ultra, the red one, you know. Other stuff feels like sandpaper. Yeah, it does. And it, you well, know, that you, toilet paper doesn't feel like sandpaper. And, uh, or it leaves res the it, little residue. Oh. Your finger can go through it mm -hmm. all to their own. Not kink shaming, Josh. Yeah, not Don't want kink, kink shaming, shaming. but oof, give me that Charmin. Naughty. And oh my gosh. I've even. See this grandma coming out of us. I've even got picky on the Charmin. I ain't using yeah. no Charmin basic. No. Basic. No, and they have that Charmin is... soft. No, I can't do it. If it's not Charmin Ultra. Talk about rich. Not doing it. <laughs> See, I do. Th See, this is Shane and I are very similar, but different. He yeah. uses Charmin strong and I use Charmin soft. <laughs> no. Well, I use my derriere for other things. Sure, so I sure. like a, a good soft touch. <laughs> <laughs> a little wet wipe afterwards. Ooh. Ooh. I need to get a bidet. Oh my gosh, have you ever used those the men's butt wipe things? You know what I'm talking about? Like the cooling dudes. ones. I just the use dudes. Yeah. I've seen them, but I 
that stuff sounds, always smells so like I don't want my butt to smell like pine or you know fresh cut lumber. Everything, pine, everything for lumber. dudes always smells like. No, these are like fresh man. scent, mm-hmm. and I can't remember the other one. I don't remember. I got like a sample of them first, and I think it might have been like a Charmin container or something oh, like okay. that. Okay, so I was like, oh, I wonder what this. I wonder. I mean, I've never used like one of those wipes before, and so you know. Try and try and something <laughs> new in the bathroom one day, Ooh, as one does. Oh, Lord have mercy. And it was like so cooling. And I was like, Ooh, oh, yeah, hello, I love the, how you doing? I love a good after wipe. Yeah, it was really refreshing. Like a cherry on top. Yeah. When the pandemic happened and everybody started going crazy for toilet paper, I mean, I was legitimately almost out of toilet paper and I couldn't find it because everybody had bought it. So I ended up buying some of those dude wipes and. Then I, not too long after that, I found toilet paper, so I didn't need them. I think they're still underneath my sink. Well, see, Kim, if you would use the name brand Charmin, oh, whatever. then you could make, you know, just a little square go a long way. But because you use a generic, you got My gotta... generic is just as good as the Charmin. It... <laughs> That's like them people that say Diet Dr. Pepper is the same as regular. Okay. Lies. I want you both to come to my house and go to my bathroom and you tell me that that toilet paper is not as good as Charmin. And when I leave that bathroom, the I'll think paper... she don't love herself. Yeah, the toilet paper is not as good. But listen, so first off, Kim, I have been to your bathroom many times. It's not as good as Charmin. You have the lowest toilet and... I've ever well, seen. Well, number one, I don't no, buy the I same know. as what I used to. I don't buy the same because I used to get Angel Soft and yeah, it's not the greatest, but... There is a generic now that is just as good as Charmin. Lies. Lies. You I've tried it. You know what I've done? You know what I've done? So I like to play little jokes on people. A little no, harmless I never prank. noticed. Oh, yeah. A little harmless <laughs> prank. Kim yeah, and whatever. I were hanging out at our house one day, and she goes into the bathroom. Shane will psychologically scar a good friend mm. just for a funny joke. So, so Kim was in the bathroom, you know, doing a number two, and... She was in there for a little while. Well, unknown to her, I had snuck in there before she got in there and took all the toilet paper and put them up above on the (laughs) shelf where, you know, she's real short. She can't reach. I know. And so she's in there, you know, doing her thing. And then all of a sudden I hear her go, gosh, dang it. Shane. And so she's just in there yelling, like just cussing up a storm at me. And I'm just out there just... What's wrong, Kim? Mm. You okay? And I'm sitting here. At first, I started panicking because I thought, man, am I out of toilet paper and didn't realize it? I should have got some. And then I catch. It never happens. Yeah. And then I catch it, a a glimpse of it out of my eye because the mirror is right across from the toilet. So it was reflecting from above me. And I'm like, oh, (laughs) I know where it's at now. That's my best friend, everybody. That's my best friend. (laughs) Best friend of mine. (laughs) That was one of the times that she was so mad. Another time that she got really mad. And listeners are going to judge me hardcore for this. But sometimes you just have to be a a child again and just laugh and just find your reasons in life. Find joy. Yeah. Well, Kim and I were hanging out with our friend Maya from Norway, and we went to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, Josh. Yeah. and Home of Dollywood, the happiest place in the world. Yes. <laughs> Not sponsored by, but boy, this episode's starting to sound like I know. Yeah. We're we got so many Charmin, sponsors. <laughs> yeah. Dollywood. Yeah. But, so we were out there hanging out, and Kim was getting so aggravated with Maya and I because we kept... Mm. <clears throat> picking on her no they kept yelling something out the window at other people yeah. oh i hate that and so it was getting to the point to where kim i'm in the back seat of kim's car she locks my window puts a child lock on my window and so finally i was like kim it, it is we're in the middle of summer i was like yeah kim, it was like I almost 100 degrees yeah. it was so hot and so i was like kim please roll down the window just give me a little air it's so hot i'm sweating so she's like fine so she gives me like this little, little like centimeter mm-hmm. of space. And as soon as she did, we drove past someone and I like squeezed my mouth right up to that thing and I just yelled, Hey lady. And Cam, of course, is just screaming at me because that lady looks over <laughs> I at me. I kept us. telling him, oh, You could get me shot. Stop it. I know. And I was like, Don't threaten me with a good time. You know, so I remember doing that in so parking funny. lots when we were younger because mom would. We grew, it was the 90s, a different time. So our right. mom would leave us in the oh, car gosh, sometimes when she'd go to get some milk. 
<laughs> She'd be in there for two hours. hours. Yes. So Shane and I, you know, we didn't have smartphones, and I don't even think we had Game Boys at that time. Right. So we occupied ourselves by oh. yelling obscenities <laughs> at passerby and hiding in the car. <laughs> yeah, just cussing. And but you know, our cuss words at that time was like S H I T. All right, you're going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> So also on that same Gatlinburg trip, Josh, my uh, myself and Kim, we get into Gatlinburg at our hotel. Kim just drove all the way there, right? Well, oh, Maya I and to I, kill them. we I get w- to the hotel. Maya and I walk up into our room, but we had to go up this real steep hill. But we wanted to see what our room looked like. Well, Kim is in the car. She's like, "Well, I, I want to get our stuff into this room." So she straps on all of her, all of like her stuff. I think we had like a small cooler. She had her camera bag. I mean, she just got all the stuff. You turned her into a mule. Yeah, <laughs> she did. So she had all her hands full. She had all this stuff strapped to Let's her. Go. And she was just going up this big hill from her car. I mean, all of our stuff. It was so funny. Well, I looked out the window and I was like, oh my gosh, Kim has all of our stuff. So I went over to the door and then closed it and locked it. <laughs> 99 <laughs> degrees outside. And so she gets to the room. Oh my and God. She's, she's like trying to push on the door with her foot, right? And the door won't open. And she's God, like, dang it. she goes, guys, guys, open the door. And I was like, who is it? <laughs> and she's like, open this. You door. monster. And I was like, we don't want any. And I, so she was just yelling at me. And it was so funny. Glad you think it was. Oh I didn't God. think it was too funny. Hey, you know, I still have a bone to pick with you because. Oh, Lord. Here we go. We had reserved a room with two beds. Hey, oh you God. deserved everything you got. No, no, no. With listen. all the crap that you put me listen. through. We get mm-hmm. there. They had given our room out. So all they had was one bed in this room. So we had this small little air mattress. So guess who gets to sleep on this air mattress? The biggest one in the group. (laughs) So they make the girls make me sleep on this little air mattress. So every night I'd wake up and this air mattress was completely flat. Right. As they do. I was completely miserable. But every morning I'd wake up completely miserable, didn't sleep that night. And all I'd hear from Kim was, Oh my gosh, this bed is the this most comfortable. Is it feels like I I'm sleeping on a cloud. I slept better than ever last night. Yeah. The I last on their pillow. I know. <laughs> I wanted to hurt, physically harm them. <laughs> the last night, though, Maya had some, like, hotel rewards or something. So mm-hmm. we got to, like, upgrade our hotel to Ooh. a nicer place. Yeah, it was really nice. So I got my own bed, and it was so nice. And so they were like, Shane... We know that you've been sleeping on on the floor, so you can sleep in, and it's going to be so nice. I was like, yes, I can't wait. So it's the only night I got any sleep. They wake me up early in the morning, and all I hear was Maya's like, Shane, what? Kim and I decided that we should probably go ahead and start driving home, and I was like, what time is it? And I think it was like five o'clock. Oh. And there, and I was like, I could literally push you off that balcony. <laughs> and one of the best things is Kim and Maya had shared this really small bed in that hotel room. They were queen size. They weren't real small. You both are big people. So it was like them sharing a single size bed, you know? Yeah. Well, her and Maya are getting in that bed. And why don't you tell that part? Yeah. The night before we were going to bed and, I, uh, Did you tell her? It was really <laughs> <laughs> no. It the beds were really tall, so I was kind of having a hard time getting like up a run in there. and jump, yeah, type run of... and jump type thing. Well, I had my phone plugged in beside me, and I had unplugged it because I was laying in bed, was playing on my phone. So I went to grab the cord that was laying on the ground. So I was kind of hanging off, going to grab it. She had just fallen asleep and thought I was falling out of bed. <laughs> and she's, she's, she, she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, don't fall out. And she grabbed, leaned over and grabbed me, and, oh, my God, we rolled. It was yeah, so it funny. Yeah, it was really funny. You talked about the, speaking of the tall bed, that made me think of nothing sparks joy in my heart more than watching a fully grown adult 
sit in something so tall that their little feet dangle. <laughs> it just, you know, some people like puppies or babies. Give me like photo after photo of a fully grown adult. Oh just gosh. little, my best friend is Kim's height and I love it when she uses a tall toilet. She, I'll hear her giggle There's sometimes. She'll be like, hey, look at this. <laughs> There's nothing worse than, well, I went someplace, I went to Chicago over the weekend to go see my daughter and we were out shopping at a mall somewhere. Rich. Right. Not too, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Next, not too far from where she lived. And I had to go to the bathroom. And I swear it seemed like they were on the ground. And I'm like, I'm a short person. <laughs> I can't imagine how Shane or Josh would react to it. My leg a goes toilet to that sleep. was almost yeah. on the ground. And I was like, man. Got to open short. the door and pull yourself <laughs> up. <laughs> I've been there. The struggle. Oh, speaking of my trip to Chicago, I bought you guys a present. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she I did. You mentioned it this morning. What'd you give yeah. us? Here. I got, a big I got you guys little tins. Aww. Mystery Aww. machine tins that Love have it. mints in them. Perfect. So Aren't cute. they cute? That's so, so cute. cute. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, I loved them. I thought they were so cute. I are was like, they, oh, I'm getting the guys. Are they special mints? No, they're just mints. Just normal mints. Just normal mints. No, no however, we, however, we did stop at one of those places. Did you get anything? No, I didn't. I still have mm. some. Mm. See, didn't she don't love me. Nothing. She does not love didn't me. Didn't give me a dang thing. Just some mints. Not even how a candy lovely. bar. Mm -hmm. Nope, nothing. <laughs> not even. Remember how grandma used to love Butterfingers? Yes. Oh my gosh. You I know, do too. And you know, you know what our grandma it's used fresh. to do. She had, was it in her panty drawer that she would keep all those stinking yeah, candy bars? next to her silky bloomers. <laughs> yes. Well, she had, no. I mean, I don't blame her. I would have done it, too, to keep them from you guys. Grandma mm. had decoys, so the good stuff was in the panty drawer. Mm -hmm. And then she had a little, like, shoe container thing, plastic one that was under the bed. Right. Where, you know, someone she don't like as much comes right. in. But if That you, has the minis on yeah, it. Yeah, if you were one of the top three. Right. Reaching my panty drawer, <laughs> they king were the, size butterfinger right, in there. Right, right. I'm like, glad though oh. she passed before they changed the recipe. And I'm glad <laughs> she. They're different now. And right. She wouldn't be happy. No, they're harder, so they don't break in half. No, oh, I loved man. her. She was so funny. I know. Yeah, you open Grandma's panty drawer and her silky underwears, her candy bars, and then her illegal cow taser <laughs> and handguns. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the time that Grandma got a new mattress? I th I can't remember. Was there so, a sword under yeah, there? Yeah, basically, I had come over to Grandma's house because, you know, she had bought a new mattress and she didn't want to be there, there home alone. And these men came from the furniture store to deliver her mattress. And so they were back in her bedroom, you know, doing their thing. They had to take out her old mattress. Well, they come in. They came into the living room. And they're like, hey, sir, can you come with me? And I was like, Yeah. So I get back there, and he's like, I need you to move that machete. And I was like, excuse oh. me. And I thought, maybe he thinks something like called a machete is different, and maybe I just didn't hear yeah. him correctly. So I look, and there's this huge knife. I mean, huge. I don't even know. It was machete. Yeah, like mm. a huge knife. And... I, was God, like, I am so much more like grandma than I really Yeah, I <laughs> got a knife it. under my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I looked down at it and I was just like, yeah, I'll move that. And I moved it. <laughs> and I walked back out there and I was like, grandma, what is that machete doing underneath your mattress? You sleeping with Rambo? What's going right. on? And she's like, well, just in case if I get, you know, sexually assaulted, if someone comes in there to do something to me. And I was like, what are you talking? I was like, you have guns in this house. There's guns everywhere in this house. There's one under your bed. They'd have to get past her <laughs> uncle and his right. girlfriend and the her dog's children. not hearing them. Yeah, <laughs> and she has a chihuahua, and they have other dogs. I mean, at what point is this guy going to get to you, and you're going to need that machete? She was such a, a nervous woman that someone was going to attack her. And I'm like, Grandma, you are the toughest person I know. Yeah. You give off that energy, like, don't mess with me. Yeah, it was just so bizarre. And I just thought, boy, she thinks, you know, I mean, that stuff happens to older women all the time. But I just thought she just wouldn't be able to reach into that nightstand that's right <laughs> next to her bed that would be the same distance to that machete and grab the gun or the taser. 
I will. But she would just grab that huge machete and she and I like she said that she this is words coming out of her mouth. And I was like, how would you like what would you do with the machete if Whack someone's attacking you? She said I cut his willy whacker off. Yeah. <laughs> cut that willy whacker right off. <laughs> That's what she said I'd cut his willy whacker off. <laughs> and I was just thinking, well, okay. I mean, so after they got done, I was like, Do you want me to put that back underneath your mattress? And she's like, Yeah. Did, All right, Grandma. Did Grandma All ever right. tell you stories about when she was in school? About how she was the school bully? Yeah, because <laughs> of that one guy who she met at that rummage sale. Yes. She yeah. met, like, years later, she met a guy she went to elementary school with because she only went to, like, sixth, sixth or eighth, eighth grade. Eighth grade, yeah. And, you know, so they weren't very old, and she thought she recognized him, and eventually she realized who he was, so she went up to him and year decades after they had known each other she walked up and he flinched from her he she was like do you know who i am he's like yeah i used to beat the hell out of me oh my <laughs> god <laughs> yeah she said it was it was never unwarranted though she was just if anybody picked on her she would just beat the crap out of mm-hmm. him but you also have to remember like grandma said this often that she was real little like yeah. real thin and they used to pick on her Bean because pole. Yeah, because of how she looked and also because her middle name was Ethel. Fill her up with Ethel. Yeah, and <laughs> it was the name of like gasoline. Oh they would make these little tunes and so around the what playground. She, yeah, so what she learned was well, that if they won't make fun of me if I beat the crap out of them. And she was right. Yeah. So she apparently, you know, beat uh, the hard crap enough out of that to guy. wear it. You'd scarred him for yeah. decades. Yeah. <laughs> I mean,. Yeah. Two for flinching. <laughs> I can see her <laughs> yeah. I think she bought some glass, or she probably would have. Boop, boop, boop. Right. That's what you get. Oh my gosh. Now, were, were you picked on in school? <sighs> yeah, sometimes. And I don't know if you remember, but one time we were getting off the school bus when we lived in Muncie, and people used to pick on us and say things to you like try to trip us and stuff i just walk right through them i'll break your leg right off there (laughs) see i don't because i just i lived in my own little world i'm like y'all are gross (laughs) don't talk (laughs) nothing you say is gonna phase me you're sniffing markers in the back yeah uh, that scarred me when we moved from Ellick to Selma. The first right. day of riding the bus, kids are like inhaling stuff in the back. Shan and I are just like, <gasps> right. I've never seen such. Our grandma a- would not handle right. this. Yeah. We were sheltered. Shenanigans. <laughs> Shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. They say if you weren't bullied, you might have been the bully. Mm-hmm. I never went out of my way to be mean to people, but no, I but there was no crap off there, of them. there was a lot of times that. I was involved in bullying, not myself, but I was the target of being bullied. There was one instance specifically that I remember, I mean, that that still sticks with me. I was walking with two friends. They were both lesbians at our school, very rural school. And we were walking to our Spanish class and there was these guys known to bully people. Oh, yeah. And... As we get ready to walk into our class, they just start throwing candy at us, like Thanks. Halloween candy. Well, you would think that, like, all jokes aside, it hurts when oh. people throw Jolly Ranchers mm. at you. Like, just h- as hard as you can possibly yeah, throw. Them at you. Yeah. And at that time, like, when you were my size, like, just being very tall, I would outgrow clothing near the end of school. Right. You know? Two so, months after you bought it. Right. So I I don't know if that was their, like, those were the things that they were making fun of. I was also really book smart, so they thought that I was very nerdish. So that was normally, like, my side of being bullied at that time. I wasn't very outgoing. You were the biggest kid in school height-wise. I I was, yeah. Like, at a bar, they're always going to pick on the biggest guy. And also, I, I was with the only openly gay couple in the school at that time, I think. yeah. And so we were walking to the class, and I mean, they just started pounding us with that candy. And I mean, there were a group of guys, I mean, probably six at least. So we continued to our class. What can you do? You know, we didn't have anything to hold my earrings. That's what, right? (laughs) So we ended up getting to our class, and we're almost like in tears, not knowing what to do. And our Spanish teacher was there, and it was just outside the classroom. 
And the Spanish teacher looks at us and she realizes that something had just happened. And so she asks us and those two girls were like, nothing happened. It's, you know, we're just having a bad day. And I just like, I was done with them. Like we had had experiences like that before where they would call people names right. and dealt with candy being thrown. And so I was just like, you know, I'm just going to tell her exactly what happened. And I was like, so I, I mean, I laid it out. I was just like, this is what happened. And blah, 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 spilled it out. And that Spanish teacher had these big high heels. And I will never forget, she walked out there and she made all those guys follow her to the principal's office. And that was the first time, like, someone actually did something about it. And those two girls that were with me were really nervous that we were going to get in trouble because it was our word versus theirs, right. you know. They're the jocks. Yeah. So it was this big deal. They ended up getting in trouble, but we, I mean, it was just, you know, not pleasant. Later on, one of those guys who continued to bully us and other people, he ends up dying. A fault of his own, he was drinking and driving, doing stupid stuff, dies. And they have a funeral for him. And they wanted everyone to come to his funeral. And I thought, you know, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. And his little girlfriend, I think it was his girlfriend, I don't think they were married, got mad for everyone in our class who did not go. And I thought, you know, I remember clearly him throwing candy and calling me names. I'm not going to his funeral. Right. You have one chance in life to be a good person to other people. I'm not going to someone's. I first off, I hate funerals. Yeah. Displaying a body, I'm not all about that life. I try not so, to go. No, I hate. I it hate just, funerals. It makes my morning worse. Yeah, like just. And I'm no. not going to respect someone who is an absolute piece of crap to me in my life. Right. No, no, no. I have mm. nothing good to say about them. If I was at their funeral, I would not be there to show respect. So why would I go? Right. For yeah. in, in those situations, I feel worse for, you know, the family. Like, oh, they lost somebody that they love. Yeah. And I can, you And know, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, by all means, I have no hard will. I forgive him for what all he did. But I'm not going to his funeral. Right. right. Yeah. No. But that's my point with all of this. You have one chance in life. He never reached out to apologize or anything like that. So I'm not going to his funeral. That, you know, whatever. I have a rough time with funerals, too. Yeah. I, we had to have a closed casket for Amber. And while well, we didn't have to, we could have had it open. But so after that, I just, I mean, I'll, I'll go, but I don't usually go up to the casket anymore. And I, I'll right. talk to the. Talk to the family, you know, and that kind of stuff. and just kind Well, of stay nobody's in, the back, but... in their right minds. Either they're, you know, just zoned out or they're right. on some kind of medication to make them zoned out. And I feel like a lot of them are just shows for, oh, let, which family member can mourn the hardest? Well, how <laughs> weird is it? I mean, I can't stand the idea of just a body being displayed anyway. Right! <laughs> and when I, before college, I was living at my uncle's house, right? And... I remember like getting roped into these funerals that I did not know who these people were. They always were. know so many people. Oh that my died. gosh, yes, our, our Waters family does. And I would get to these funerals, and because normally I would have to go somewhere with him afterwards, that's why I'd have to go to these. Because I gotta was, stop by this funeral <laughs> yeah, real quick. Like, how rude is it just to wait in the car? Right. You know? so, I would have. Oh, I know now. I, would I be got like, anxiety. Dumb. I'll be out here. I'll yeah. make it worse. Yeah. But back then, you know, I would just go ahead and go in. And there's nothing worse than, like, waiting in line and then having to pay your respect to someone you do not know. And, oh No, I got I do have a really funny funeral story. And it's also another reason why I don't like to go to funerals. When my ex that died and I were dating, before I moved in with him, I was actually going to break up with him. Like, I... We had planned it out. He's going to come over. It. it was still when we lived in that big blue house. I had only been with him for maybe a mm. month and a half. And I just, all the warning signs were there. And I was going to break up with him. And the night he was coming over and I was going to end it, you know, with my mom and her husband there to protect me. <laughs> <laughs> he came over late crying, just crying. Because his beloved aunt, who he was very close to, had just died. Oh. 
Oh my god! So like literally, you could, you couldn't do it then. So then, out of guilt, you know, mm-hmm. I just never could figure out how long can you wait after someone's family dies to break up with them. Right. Six years. <laughs> right. But at the funeral, you know, his aunt knew one of his exes, and one of his exes who he dated for like ten years before me came to the funeral. So mm. you know, it was, uh, added an element of awkwardness, right? Because he was still in love with him. You can take him, but in the middle of the funeral, the preacher's up there, you know, blah blah blah, and my ex gets up and runs out of the room crying. Well, I had been sitting cross-legged and did not realize that my leg was numb. (laughs) And I looked because his ex was sitting right behind him and he looked like he was about ready to get up. And I'm like, no, you know, you're the boyfriend. You should be the one to go comfort the big baby. And (laughs) I feel bad for him that his aunt died, but he was a cry. He was a cry. And (laughs) I stood up, took a step. (laughs) collapsed onto a lady's lap <laughs> onto a lady's lap and i was ho oh, everybody in that big room just looked over at me because it was you know i'm a tall person i you saw me stand up take a step and i fell on in a time and she was the best dressed woman there like i remember when she walked in mainly because her boyfriend was sexy and i couldn't have fallen on, on his lap right. i fell on this gorgeous woman's lap and i'm just like i'm so sorry but my leg was still asleep so i couldn't get up right at the, like right away so i'm like i'm sorry hang on i just had to sit there for like 10 seconds while the blood flowed back in my leg and i could get off her lap and then i hobbled out of the room oh my gosh I don't know if it's a family thing, but my family always would go, you know, if it was a family member that died or whatever, we would sit all the way through calling hours. And normally they would have like two hours in the afternoon and two hours in the evening. So we would go and spend all two hours in the afternoon and then all two hours in the evening. Yeah. But when Amber passed away, they told us at the funeral home because of the way that she had passed away and it was so public that instead of having a four hour viewing, we needed to have a six, it was either six or eight hours. I can't remember. Mm. And we did it all at once. We didn't do it. It would, and I didn't think it was ever going to end. Yeah. No kidding. It was long. That's how Real. uncle lens was. Wasn't it? I mean, yeah. you said there was a line around yeah, around the church. Yeah. I did not. Yeah. Know. It lasted all day. Again, I don't like funerals yeah. even, and it's not about, Oh, I don't love them or anything like that. It's just, it just makes my grief worse. Yeah. Everybody grieves in their own way. And I'm an introvert, so let me just let me go and get my honey buns and <laughs> <laughs> cry in my room mm. alone. <laughs> oh boy, we've been all over the topics today. No Toilet kidding, paper to <laughs> No joke. Funerals to boys. My K is so much bigger than your S and your J. How convenient, Kim. Well, I didn't get it the same place. Yeah, she asked me the size. I said roughly two inches. Pui pui. <laughs> hey, mine was first. That's where it belongs. Well, it's a different size. Should have put it in the oh, middle. Look. Oh, I should have. Alan, fixed it. jerk. <laughs> well, I came in here and uh, Kim had me had second guessing. It was like this. My J was, and I looked at it and I'm like, wait, is that right? Have I been writing my name wrong? <laughs> I had to like, Josh. I didn't even <laughs> notice it. Why'd she put hers first? Because KSJ? I, because I am producer Kim. I belong first. See, we she said, should be last. We said when we gave her that title, mm. it was going to go to her. Uh, all of a sudden, she <laughs> has a title. Right. Ooh. Yep. It's just a vanity title. I need a, no, you know what I need? I need a director's chair with my <laughs> name on the back. We'll make it Can one I get of the tall chair? ones. No, that not is a tall, tall one. one her. We'll sell that on the patreon if you want a video each week of kim getting up in her tall director's I should, chair right. I should along start with a, a diaper go fund me page go fund me page for kim to get a a director's chair along we'll, we'll start selling some kim what do they call those adult diapers depends, depends. kim you would know oh, the name wouldn't you by the way brief so when <laughs> we went to colorado a few years ago right and he thought he was going to be funny and send me a thing of depends so that I wouldn't have to stop every two hours to go to the bathroom. They're good two for hours They're is, good for is pushing it for her. Well, I regifted those to my uncle that turned 60 in oh, September. Yeah. How, how lovely. <laughs> I was like, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do with these because they've set up my house for, what, three years now? 
No, she'll stop about every hour, hour and a half. And when you're driving, when you're driving all the way to Colorado, you're like, all right. No, it's not. She's like, oh, we better stop. (laughs) We better stop. But you've had issues, Kim. You've had to pull over. Listen, anybody with (laughs) any woman who's had children, even if they have. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my f- best friend, you know, once she had her son, now when she laughs too hard, a yep. little pee comes out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And That's you know, true. too, because she'll be, ah! <gasps> <gasps> <Yep>. <laughs> Every time I love it, I'll be like, you be. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll try to make it to where, like, she'll pee a little. I'll get her oh laughing. I'm like, let's give Brittany to pee a little. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not... That's no joke. That's what happens to everybody that's had kids. I love the face, though. Now, Kim... <laughs> You've been driving on the road, and you've had to pull over before, haven't you? We've no. all done that. Yes, you have. I've heard stories. Can we not talk about this? I've heard this stories. This is not a story I wish to share. <laughs> Fine, we'll just make something up. <laughs> <laughs> that farmer is still scarred emotionally. <laughs> There didn't like a police officer pull up or something oh my God. while you were. Excuse me, ma'am. Where pulled you over. Doing? The hell are you doing over here? Yeah. So you were peeing on the no, side of the road. She wasn't no. peeing. Oh, oh you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fertilizing the field. We had gone to Fort Wayne, and it, the the roads were That's nasty. very far. <laughs> The oh. roads were real nasty. It was during the winter. and Oh, outside in the winter? You oh, know? man. Mm. There was snow. Kid there sickles. was wrecks everywhere. We kept getting caught in, in traffic because of wrecks. And I'm like, man. I, I'm prairie dog I, back here, yeah, guys. I, cannot, I can't hold it any longer. <laughs> I pull over as far as I can. And I had a van at the time. And opened up the van door and. So that I could try to cover myself as much as possible. Well, who all was with you? You had like a it van. It was just me and Cole. Oh, just two people. Yeah. Okay. And so I get done. I get done right, and I go around and go to get into the car, and here comes a cop up next to me, and he's like, "Ma'am, you okay? Yep, good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, just keep you. going, please, <laughs> God, just keep going. Don't put me on a list, officer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see this." <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, if I hadn't of it, it would have been some real bad news because yeah. there, was, there was no stopping. You'd have to gotten a new car. Yeah, I would have. <laughs> Poor Cole, he, oh he would have been riding on the top or something. <laughs> Woo, it would no. not have been good. Right. But got to uh, do what you got to do. Yeah, you got to do sometimes. What you gotta do. Listen, I never judge anybody's poo story. Oh, I do. I just don't say it I, I have had the worst. Of I think any any poo incident I've ever oh, heard yeah, of. I was there. Oh yeah. no! Why have I not heard <laughs> this one? Well, this <laughs> makes make mine sound real tame. Well, it came in handy when well, I worked at the young. nursing home because you know yeah. some people it makes them feel bad when they no longer able to hold it. Right? And, you know, you're changing their brief and whatnot, and I never it never bothered me. I'm like, I'm just glad I can help you, honey. Now get it, get it cleaned up and. The new ones, when they're like, oh, God, I'm just so embarrassed. And I'd be like, honey, this is nothing to be embarrassed about. Let me tell you what I did. <laughs> you ever crap on a ceiling? Because I have. How <laughs> <laughs> oh. the crap did you do that? I still, I, just saying that out now, I yeah. hear grandma, like, she uh-huh. behind me, like, oh, I ought to help you clean oh. that up, too. <laughs> It was the ceiling, the floor. The, the t- whole toilet. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Some, she I, had to change her decor from lighthouses yeah. to something else. <laughs> the bathroom, I, just, yeah. I got everywhere. And that somehow, whole bathroom. on the way oh, for him to get into the shower, it, like, got all over the floor. It's I just think they were falling out so, of me. I think there was even <laughs> some... Yeah, it was everywhere. <laughs> was and it. I remember just, just hearing... I think we were we were watching was it share or something on TV? We were watching something. I don't remember what it was, but I was trying to hold it till a commercial, <laughs> and I did. I was able to hold it till a commercial, and I ran and I made it to the toilet, <laughs> and I started going. But after a few seconds, I realized I'm sitting on the toilet lid. <laughs> So my child brain, my the, the first thing, I was like, okay, the quickest way to remedy, remedy this is just to lean forward a little so it all just stays here. Open the lid and sit back down that way. 
you know, the e- I feel like that would make the least amount of mess was my goal here when I realized that. But it did not. It actually <laughs> indeed made the biggest of messes because I flung that toilet lid up that I had already been going on and it just flung <laughs> excrement at least, at everywhere. Least you were in the comfort of your own no, home. No, uh, <laughs> then if, I, if it wasn't, we would have just left. <laughs> All of a sudden, like Josh is making noises, <laughs> maybe gagging noises or something. And our grandma is like, what in the world's going on in there? So she gets up and she opens the door. And I think she was getting ready to open the door. And Josh was like, don't open that door. No, you like, don't want to see just this. He's screaming. I'm trying the, to think, how can I clean this myself? Yeah. It's just too big. And so, you know. The, Makes we, me think of the Dumb and Dumber movie. Yeah. And when what, you're. Uh, worse. We, when you're a kid and you're yelling at your grandma. <laughs> Open that door. Like she gonna She's open, that, gonna door. open that door. Right. What the hell are you doing in here? Yeah, yeah. So she opens the door and I'll never forget her going like Oh, oh my God. God. Are you shit on the shit? <laughs> so then all of a sudden I hear that and I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? You know? <laughs> so I got up and I walk in and I was like <gasps> <laughs> You walked right back out. Yeah, because I mean there's some demonic Something going on in that bathroom. Okay, no, so I actually, have to know. I think you might have been in the shower because you had to figure out a way to get out of the shower all clean without I might have. getting yeah. poo all over. That's, <laughs> That's hilarious. Not, all right, now I need to. Hilarious. I have to know. Have you ever went someplace and had to go really bad, and you go to the bathroom and you go, and then you realize that the toilet is broken and you can't flush it, and you have no choice but to get up and leave? Oh, I, I don't feel no shame in that. Kim, remember that time it. that you had to leave your dirty drawers? Oh, uh, that's <laughs> happened more than once. I almost called. She told me that, that she had to leave her dirty drawers at a certain store. Oh, in God. Mercy because she, she, in the trash can. she did. And I, I was like, you know, I'm almost tempted to call them. And tell them who left their dirty drawers. <laughs> I, I know who left those underwear. You can if find her at this curious. address. Hey, look, I wrapped them all up in in paper towels and everything else. They had no idea. Oh, that they, were they there. Kim. Listen, we're all they're, human, and everybody poops they're just like find that book. Them. But no, you know how like if you use a bad check, they'll have a photo of you. <laughs> that's, Don't that's, let this lady in the store. <laughs> that's what I imagine. Like this if woman she needs to go to the bathroom, tell her it's closed. Yeah, it's the woman. phantom shitter. No. <laughs> And then, listen, I was with Kim one day, and we were driving through that small town that they call a fountain because they can't pronounce it right. Oh, the fountain. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And Kim really had to go to the bathroom, and she yeah. couldn't hold it anymore. Mm-mm. So she gets ready to go up to the gas station, which is the only, like, thing around there, It's always right? closed at that one. Well, and they have a sign up now yeah, that they says don't, it's not no public. public bathroom. And so Kim's like, well... I can't go anywhere else. So then you went inside. Yeah, I, w- I went. I'm like, I there's no way. I won't make it anywhere else. There's nowhere and else I, to stop on. No. No. And I went in, and there was a lady standing there. And I said, I know this says that it's not a public restroom. And if this was not a dire emergency, I would not even ask. And she says, just don't mess it up. And I'm like, fine. <laughs> if I do, I'll clean it up. <laughs> I go do my business, and I, I like, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I mean, it just kept... Thanking her over and yeah. over again because I mean it it would have been a bad situation. Right. <laughs> My friend's husband used to work at a gas station, and the stuff people do in the bathrooms at the gas station. Ugh. That reminds me of when Wendy was here from England. Oh, and she uh, threw up. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> and, and it wasn't like she described it. She's like, "Oh my gosh." It, you know, it's just a little dirty, and it was the it smell was of the smelly. woman taking a dump that made her throw up. Yeah, and that <laughs> the lady was on the phone using the bathroom too with the door open. Yeah, why? <laughs> just why? blowing it up on the phone, the stall door she wide had open. To talk. Yes, apparently she was busy. She oh, likes I'm sorry. to be that's watched. Where I, that's where I draw <laughs> yeah. the line. I don't. I won't be on the phone. When but I when I was in England, I could see like why Wendy would think our gas stations here are completely disgusting, especially the bathrooms. Because that one was. In England, their bathrooms in the gas stations are really nice. Like the gas stations themselves are like little grocery stores that are just really oh, yeah. clean. Like the food there is really good in those gas stations too. We think- travel enough that we know which ones are the good ones to yeah. stop at. Casey's Casey's always has a really nice bathroom. Yeah. What's the name of those gas stations that we was stopping at to charge the Tesla when we went to the-, the East Coast? 
Sheets. 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 That's what it was. I, we uh, were talking about I them love when those. we went to Chicago, and I couldn't remember the name of it. That's yeah. my favorite I've ever been to. The cleanest bathrooms. Yeah, they're real nice. And like, you can also order food. They have really good yeah, food. Yeah, they have good food there. You don't have to talk to anybody. Self everything. <laughs> oh, I like it. No people. How lovely. <laughs> I, I, well, I have a lot of criteria on what makes a public bathroom usable. And right. that one I is the only one I've ever gone to where you walk out and you're like, my hands smell so good from that yes, soap. Yes, their soap smells really good. I'm like, oh, it's not just acid and antibacterial. <laughs> yeah, you can also order your food in the app, too, so it's really convenient. Oh, mm-hmm. heaven. Yeah. Anytime I travel, if I see one of those, I'm like, mm, let's go. Mm-hmm. We're going to squeeze it out. Cause right. <laughs> I want to apologize to our listeners now. We're 51 minutes in, and we still Sweet haven't Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> haven't got to our mystery yet. We'll get in the edit. We'll take out a minute or two. All right. In the <laughs> All right, Josh, why don't you go ahead and give us give us your mystery? Well, my mystery for today is fairly well known, but that doesn't make it any less mysterious. Imagine living on an island and leaving your friends and family to do a little grocery shopping across the ocean back home in Britain. You tell everyone that you'll be back within six months, but you get held up by a pesky war... That delays your return by three years. Once you finally make it back home, you're a little nervous but optimistic, especially as you get close enough to see some of the building progress your fellow colonists have built while you were gone. As you get closer, you start to notice that there is no smoke rising from any of the chimneys, and no one is visibly walking about or waiting for you on shore. You finally make it and begin to look around. You see no one, not your family, friends, or any clues as to what happened, aside from two carvings in some wood. One that reads Crow and another that spells Croatoan. Those two carvings would be the only clues as to what happened to the lost colony of Roanoke. Colonial White Devils <laughs> first arrived on Roanoke Island on July 22nd, 1587. It was not their intended destination, though, which was Chesapeake Bay. They actually intended Roanoke to only be a pit stop so they could pick up 15 soldiers who were left on the island two years earlier. Had no idea they did that to people back then. <laughs> They're like, I'm sorry, we ain't got room. Y'all just stay here. We'll be back in a few years, hopefully. Right. God, the trust. Once they were on Roanoke Island, the ship's captain refused to sail further north, and it forced the crew, which was made up of 97 men, 17 women, and 9 boys, all to unload on the island, making it their new permanent home. Once on shore, they were met with evidence of a massacre and no sign of any of the 15 soldiers that they had stopped for. The soldiers who were left on the island were left with two years of provisions and were meant to protect the fort that had been built there. They were directed by Sir Richard Granville to stay in guard it after the previous guards had been chased away by pissed-off Native Americans. The colonialists and natives did have a kind relationship with each other at first, but one of the men in charge at Roanoke in 1585 led two campaigns against the native tribes in the area. He set fire to their homes and killed innocent families, single-handedly ruining any symbiotic relationship with them and creating new enemies of the crown. Those local tribes retaliated and began leading their own attacks on the fort at Roanoke until the soldiers were forced to swim to a passing British ship. None of the new colonists were surprised at the soldiers not being there, assuming that the local tribes had killed them, which were still and rightfully aggressive towards the British. They were so aggressive, in fact, that one of the colonists was killed by them only nine days after arriving while he was crabbing. That sounds so dirty. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's crabbing. Oh, it took me a minute to f- figure out what you were talking crabbing, about. Crabbing. Crabbing. I know. <laughs> with, yeah, with the way I speak, crabbing. that's not a word. Then. Crabbing. Yeah, well, he was crabbing. <laughs> that's a crabbing. The man in charge, an artist named Jonathan White, realized that they would be stuck on the island and went to another nearby island that was home to the native Croatans. 
and with the help of a translator, he was able to broker some peace. The year rolled on, and the first English baby born in America arrived by August, and her name was Virginia. Hmm. Along with her arrival came the realization that they didn't bring enough supplies with them. Ordinarily, they would have arrived and planted crops to make it through the winter, which were much harsher than they were used to. It was now August, and there was no time for them to plant any type of any crop that would be harvestable by the time the first frost fell. Left with no other choice, John White took the ship and sailed back to England to load up several others and bring supplies back. His voyage was organized and only was supposed to take six months. Two months to sail there, two to gather supplies, and two more to sail back. Took about 66 to 70 days to sail from America to England Mm. back then. I was curious. Well, if you know your Elizabethan history, you'll know that upon John's return, England was on the verge of war with the Spanish Armada, and Queen Elizabeth I herself had issued that every ship was to fight the more powerful Spanish ones. To Elizabeth, winning the war with the Spanish was much more important than the fate of a small, failing colony. So John was forced to stay and fight for three years until 1590 when he was finally able to return. When he landed on shore at Roanoke, he quickly realized something terrible had happened. The fort was overgrown with grass and weeds and even guns and farm equipment were all left all over the place. Even more strange, he discovered that chests that had been buried by the crew and contained all their valuables had been dug up and broken into. Only none of the valuables had been taken and they were just all left there out in the open. Jewelry, guns, books, and photos all left behind. Before John had left back to England, he instructed those remaining that if something were to happen and they had to abandon the fort, to carve a cross on a tree and leave a marking on others in the direction that they headed. After searching the entire area, the only carvings that were left were the ones that said crow and crow at Toen, and those were carved into two logs that made up part of the fort's protective wall which gave John the impression that the colonists had been under attack and had carved it before they were forced to flee quickly. White assumed that the col- Is it either or either? Could be either. (laughs) I hate you! I hate you! I love you, but I hate you. This is what I grew up with. Wonder I have anxiety. Could be either. (laughs) Just had a flashback to you helping me with my math homework. (laughs) What's the answer? This one or this one? It could be either. You tell me. White assumed that the colonists had either faced starvation and left to join their native neighbors, or that they were attacked by another less friendly tribe and were taken as prisoners. Like I said, the tribe that was closest to them, they did eventually broker peace, but a lot of other native tribes did not like or want anything to do with the British and Mm. saw them as colonial white devils. But sadly, before John could investigate further, a large storm, believed to have been a hurricane, started to approach, and he was forced to sail back to England. And he died three years later without ever again returning to the wilds of America or knowing what happened to the daughter and granddaughter that he left behind. The whereabouts of the lost colony of Roanoke are still debated today, The most widely accepted scenario is that they were just absorbed into their native neighbor's tribe, which is also the most optimistic (laughs) one. Time does add to the mystery, though, because this isn't the only time that the word Croatoan appears when someone mysteriously vanishes. You would think it was just meant to reference Croatoan Island near Roanoke or the native tribe, but it has another otherworldly meaning behind it. In 1888, a thief named Black Bart carved the word Croatoan in his cell wall before he was released and disappeared. In 1913, author Ambrose Bierce 
wrote the word on his wooden bedpost right before he himself vanished without a trace. In 1921, a ghost ship named Carol A. Deering had the word written as the last word in its ship log when it was discovered without its crew when it had run aground. Mm. And more famously, the word was even scribbled in Amelia Earhart's journal right before she disappeared in 1937. In the poet, Edgar Allan Poe was found mumbling words, and Croatoan was one of the words that he couldn't stop mumbling on his deathbed after he had mysteriously disappeared. He had been visiting Pennsylvania and had gone missing in the woods. Several days later, he was found almost unconscious, mumbling on the streets of Baltimore, which was roughly 180 miles away. And Croatoan was one of the last words he mumbled. Will the mystery of the lost colony of Roanoke ever be solved? Did all 100 plus of them just integrate into the nearby native tribes, or were they victims of cannibalism, or something perhaps out of this world? Our patrons that are join us for Unmasked, you can stay tuned for an update that was discovered around the time of the Great Depression and tied to the lost colony of Roanoke. But there is a new day tomorrow. It just ain't been touched yet. That's our seven word of the day. Oh, I had to squeeze it in there last minute. I keep forgetting about <laughs> it. I'm going to have yeah, to we... start sending you a text reminding you to put them in there. I know. Well, I was like, I got my bless your heart. I got my mass. I was like, what am I forgetting? <laughs> Southern word of the day. We know how much Josh likes to be touched. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I was just telling Kim it's been several months since <laughs> I've been touched by a man. <laughs> touched. We won't discuss how long it's been since I've <laughs> Well, I've just never gone Decades. that long without the touch, <laughs> the feel, the touch of cotton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh, man. Just I kidding. think we need to go to church, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Some yeah. church. It probably wouldn't one. help. Hurt, it probably yeah. wouldn't. I probably, probably would burn. <laughs> probably. <laughs> We'd step inside and, and lightning would hit it or something. Right. I'll just say it wouldn't let me in there. <laughs> 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 they see me coming, but like, mm, mm, no, better not. It ain't going to work. We can already <laughs> tell. <laughs> <sighs> All right. We ready for my mystery for today? Yes. Yeah, so my nose right. like quit itching. I want you itch it, Kim. No, it itches. I itch can't it. Help it. Are you done? Are She's been okay? brown nosing. I know. Yeah, She's been so talking good. crap about too many people. <laughs> Her nose itches too much. All right, Josh. So my story for today, it's not just a heartbreak, but it's also a deep, perplexing mystery. Ooh. Now, this story is of Paige Doherty. Paige is a 15-year-old girl from Clyde Bank. I think I'm pronouncing that right. But the problem is that this city is from Scotland. And so I've never been to Scotland. So that's how I would pronounce it. But I believe that might be how it's pronounced. I'm sure that there's someone from Scotland who will let me know. (laughs) Now, this case has a lot of layers. And it has a lot of layers of mystery. There's a lot of layers of horror. And when you hear about it, it's kind of hard to shake off. Because it is a solved case, but there's still a layer of mystery. So let's jump in and I'll get to the mystery part, okay? Dun, dun, dun. I know. I'm just going to be a man of mystery today. Now I'm going to get into the details of this and I'm going to be a little specific because when it comes to true crime cases, I like to make sure that I have all the details correct. So I'm going to try to do my best to lay it all out there. So Paige, of course, from Scotland, she was born in the year 2000. And at the time of this story, I'm talking about 2016. At that time, she's 15 years old. Paige, as I mentioned, she's living in Clydebank with her mother. We're talking about Scotland. Pamela was her mom and her stepfather. His name is Andy. She's also living with her two younger brothers and sister. Josh and I, we also had two younger stepsisters. Pui, pui. Uh-huh. 
didn't care for them. <laughs> I always wanted a little sister, and the first day we met him, one of them threw up, and I was like, mm. never mind. <laughs> no. Did, Return didn't it. Very well. Didn't work very well. <laughs> so the family seemed very happy, and Paige was known to absolutely adore her mother and stepfather. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. I wish we would. We, I wish that Josh and I had a stepfather. At we could have liked. Could have adored. <laughs> yeah, he was a piece of crap. That'll be a mystery for another day, though. What, all two or three of them. We'll wait till we see <laughs> him in the obituary. <laughs> right. We'll do a good well, episode. I'd like to see him in an obituary. <laughs> I look. <laughs> I look. he have been a prison. Oh, you're talking about the last one, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So, Pam. Wait, and he even printed it out. He didn't write it. I know. Well, it's because I, I have so much, so it yeah. was hard for me to write it. I did start to write it, so half of it's written, actually. Mm-hmm. But then my hand started hurting. It cramped. Aww, I didn't want to get carpal tunnel. Horrible. So Pamela was a younger mother. So Paige started to feel, I think, like her parents were, were more friends than parents. Mm. Uh, but the two were sp- really spitting image of each other. The pictures, if you look at them, her... And her mom looked just alike. Like most teenagers nowadays, Paige in 2016 spent a lot of time on social media taking selfies, doing her makeup, and carefully picking out her outfits. Kind of just reminded me a lot of Amber. Like all the videos and photos of Amber, Mm -hmm. Kim's daughter. You just see her doing all her videos. Got to do the duck face selfie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, doing her hair up and... Looking good all the time. According to her mom, Paige was very respectful and a, and a loving girl who wouldn't do anything to hurt others. She was a very kind soul. But unfortunately, Paige happened to meet a person who was a complete opposite person of her Aww. and a person who was willing to hurt her. So let's jump into that. On March 18, 2016, Paige had a sleepover that night at her friend's place before she headed to work that morning. The salon that she worked at was located 20 minutes from her home and from her friend's house. So Paige always took a bus to get to the salon. On her way to the bus stop, Paige often visited one of the delis that was nearby to get breakfast. The morning of March 19th was no different. The morning after the sleepover, she was going to stop there as well. Paige followed the very normal routine. However, something went completely wrong. Around noon, Paige's boyfriend, Dylan, began to feel weird. His girlfriend, who was usually always on her phone, always messaging, always on social media, had not called or sent him any texts back, which was out of the normal. The two had not argued or had any problems whatsoever, so her giving him the silent treatment was very out of place. He just didn't understand it. But still, Dylan reassured himself that everything was all right. Perhaps Paige had just forgot her charger at home or something. Taking a nap. Yeah. But when Dylan had not heard from Paige by lunchtime, he couldn't help but begin to start worrying. And the situation just was way out of character for her. So Dylan decided to call the hair salon where Paige worked just to check on her. But when he called, the answer he got didn't make him feel any better. Instead, he started to panic. Paige's boss told him that she never showed up for work that morning. And he immediately hung up and called her mom. And he was hoping that maybe he would hear that she was just homesick. And that would also explain why he wasn't hearing from her. But her mom told her that she hadn't heard from Paige either. And that she definitely wasn't home. So, of course, Dylan starts worrying. He, you know, I can just imagine at that point in time, your anxiety is so high, your hands start shaking. That's what mine do. So he is starting to check all of Paige's social media accounts. He's looking through his text messages and he starts to realize that she's not had activity on all of those since the night before during that sleepover. So that was kind of the last straw. Both Dylan and her mom knew that something must have happened to Paige, and they needed to contact the authorities. So the police arrived quickly to interview Paige's parents, while other family members and friends began to raise awareness of her disappearance. And the most worrying thing about all of this is that no one knew 
where Paige had gone. No one had any whereabouts of where she could be. It was almost like the earth just swallowed her up. It was very bizarre that she just got up, left the uh, sleepover, and vanished. Hmm. The police and volunteers followed the route that Paige usually took to work, and they searched all the nearby areas, but Sunday morning, there were still no signs of her. While Paige's family and friends continued their mission online, they were creating, you know, help find Paige on Facebook, and they were distributing posters. The police tried to figure out where the teenager may have gone, and it was known for sure that Paige had left her friend's house that morning, and she had walked to the bus stop. But did she ever make it to the bus stop itself? You know, that's what the police are trying to figure out. So by the bus stop that Paige would have used, there were five shops. And it was very likely that she would have gone into one of them to get breakfast before heading to work. And so the police went into each one of these and started talking to each of the owners of the shops. One of the people the police talked with was a man named Ashi. The name, the first name was spelled A-S-H-I. And he said that he had seen Paige that morning, that she disappeared, and it was around 8.15 a.m. According to him, Paige often visited his deli, but that Saturday, she had walked past his shop and stepped into one called Delicious Deli, which was right next door. So now that the police had confirmed that Paige did indeed stop by these shops, they asked all the owners to provide CCTV footage. Only Ashy had video from outside the shops. All the other restaurants and stores only had cameras inside. The police were hopeful that the footage would show what direction she went into after she got breakfast. But in the end, they did not need the video to find where she went. Oh. Yeah. I'd say good, but I don't think it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And I think you're right, Josh. So less than two days after Paige's disappearance, on Monday, March 21st, the police responded to a call reporting something suspicious under bushes near Glasgow's Great Western Railroad. As they arrived at the scene, the investigators discovered the body of a young woman with brunette hair. At that time, there were only two girls missing in the area with dark hair. Of course, there was Paige and the other girl, who eventually showed up alive later that evening. Her mom and other family members visited the morgue the following day and confirmed that this was Paige. Yeah. So straight away, it was clear that someone had attacked Paige viciously. She had been stabbed dozens of times. The reported amount of wounds and injuries, they differ, but it seemed that Paige had suffered at least 60 stab wounds and a total of 150 injuries. Jesus. According to her mom, the media downplayed what had happened to her daughter, completely leaving out the fact that Paige had a hole the size of a fist in her neck. Almost like half of her neck was gone. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Empire. Yeah. Like, this was really, really brutal. The medical examiner determined that the killer had used scissors, a knife, and a screwdriver. Jesus. And possible other tools to stab Paige. This was not an accident or a spur of the moment kind of murder. Whoever did this had used time with Paige, changing weapons and torturing her for as long as possible. The day after Paige's torn apart body was discovered, a young boy claimed that he was the one responsible for her death. And he posted pictures of him with a bloody knife on social media. But in the end, the police concluded that this boy was only telling sick lies to get attention. Mm. Can you Jesus. imagine? Why would you want attention like that? I mean, he needs to be sent to some facility mm-hmm. for help because he has some problems. Take your meds, everybody. Don't mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But there was someone the police thought could have crucial information about Paige's last moments. His name was John, and John was from the delicious deli. John was a 31-year-old married man, father of two. Coincidentally, one of John's daughter's names is actually also Paige. Oh, boy. Yeah. But weirdly, when the officers questioned John about Paige, he said he had not seen her that morning that she vanished. 
And not just that, John claimed that he did not recognize Page's face at all, saying that he did not keep track of his customers. While it is true that a shop owner cannot remember everyone, we're not talking about a big city, and Page visited these delis at least every week. Right. So they recognize. Yeah, a regular, right? So the officers did not really buy John's story. Then, all of a sudden, John remembered things a little differently. Now he said, Paige and Dee did come in that morning. She bought a roll for breakfast, and then she just left. John said there had not been anything strange in the teenager's behavior that day, and that she behaved the same that she always did, even though John had just earlier said that he didn't remember her at all. But even though John's behavior was very suspicious, police did not have any other evidence against him at that point, so they needed to see the CCTV footage. Watching through all that video, the the investigator saw Paige entering Delicious Deli at 8.21 a.m. Then they kept watching the footage, waiting for the teenager to come out. But the minutes passed, and Paige still remained inside the Delicious Deli. At that point, the police had video of a three-hour window on tape, but they did not see Paige again during that time. Starting to have a bad feeling, the officers returned to Ashy's shop and asked for the whole 12-day loop of footage. They also brought John in for questioning. After all, this man had claimed that Paige left his shop straight after buying the roll, and that obviously was not the case. Mm -hmm. The police thought the mystery would be easily solved as soon as they saw the CCTV footage from inside John's deli, but they were wrong. John did provide the tapes willingly, but as the officers were going through them, they immediately noticed the footage had been tampered with. They literally did not see Paige on the tapes at all. Shady. I know. Meanwhile... The police continued to watch the footage from Ashy's camera outside the shops, but no matter how far they kept going, Paige was not seen again. So the officers were left with only one possible explanation. Paige had met her killer at Delicious Deli. And even though the investigators did not see Paige leaving the shop, they did see John behave rather strangely. Around 10 a.m., almost two hours after Paige entered the shop, John was seen on the video running out of the shop to another one and then back. According to witnesses, Delicious Deli's shutters were closed during that time. Mm -hmm. What had been so important for John that he had closed his business in the middle of the day? The officers kept watching the video, where John was then seen walking to his car opening the trunk, clearing up space. He then returned to his deli and walked out again, carrying a heavy bin bag or a heavy trash bag in his hands. John placed the bag in the trunk and drove away at 11.59 a.m. There was no way of explaining this innocently. And then on Thursday, March 24th, 2016, John was arrested on suspicion of the murder of Paige. Despite that CCTV evidence, John apparently stuck with his story, claiming Paige came to the deli, bought a roll, and then left. When the police then interviewed the owner of the shop where John had been seen running to on the video, they learned that he had bought bleach and antibacterial wipes in addition to trash bags. Two days later, John appeared at a private court hearing, during which he did not say a word. He did not give a guilty or not guilty plea. John refused to speak at all. He ain't helping his case at all. Mm -mm. (laughs) But during his second time around, on September 5th, 2016, John did plead guilty to the murder of Paige. However, John never did take responsibility for what he had done and tried to give bizarre excuses to why he would kill a 15-year-old girl. Self-defense, what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to John, Paige came to his deli, ordered a roll, 
and then began talking about work, John claimed that Paige was unhappy at her current job and was looking for something else. John promised to help Paige out and asked her to fill out an application form, but at that moment, he noticed that Paige was a minor. John claimed that he told Paige that he couldn't hire her because of her age, but she got angry. So much so that according to John, Paige threatened him, saying that if he didn't give her the job, she would go to authorities and say that he sexually assaulted her. John had then panicked, remembering how difficult life had been for his twin brother after being registered as a sex offender. So instead of trying to resolve the issue some other way, John picked up the knife and stabbed Paige to death. I ain't going to be a sex offender, but I'll be a murderer. Right, Mm -hmm. as one does. The thing here is that nothing in John's statement sounds believable. At all. No. Paige was interested in beauty and fashion and working in a hair salon. Why would she want to quit and apply to a deli? On top of that, if John was really just panicking, how did Paige end up with at least 150 injuries? Done with at least three different weapons. Nothing added up here. But as long as John does not want to tell the truth, we may never know his true motives. Paige was not sexually assaulted, and there was no evidence of her ever knowing John on a personal level. So what made him take the life of this 15-year-old in the middle of a Saturday morning? John was eventually sentenced on October 12th, 2016, to 26 years in jail before being eligible for parole. However, the minimum term was later reduced to 23 years. Based on the fact that Paige's murder did not appear to be premeditated and John had shown remorse, which is not really the case as he only keeps lying about what happened that day. Nevertheless, John will remain in prison for a while longer. Meanwhile, a little positive thing that will end here. Meanwhile, her mom has been completing her daughter's bucket list. I thought this was really cute. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What she does is she goes to places that her daughter wanted to go to. That includes visiting New York and Barbados. She met Amy Childs from The Only Way. And she even got a tattoo. Oh. Yeah. From The Only Way is Essex, I guess. is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the way that her mom felt is that John denied Paige the opportunity to experience these things for herself. So her mom is doing them so that she can still feel like, you know, that it's keeping Paige alive. Yeah. And she's experiencing this thing. with her. Yeah. Same Aww. reason I want to go see Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was a really, really interesting story. And it still has the layer of mystery because, you know, normally when you have such a crazy story like that there's some type of sexual angle to it right and it's some so fetish bu- that went to yeah you. and it's so bizarre how brutal the attack is and i don't believe him but where he's like you know i panic and stabbed her with a knife then what you're scissors. found a screwdriver and some scissors yeah. later and like well what's this yeah let's keep going you know, yeah she's let's make sure and 60 the, something times. yeah and the thing is though is that it's so messy to kill someone so you have a huge mess to clean up, too. Don't so, I know it. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so none of it makes sense. There's absolutely no reason for it. And you know what's another crazy thing about all of this? You know, and as someone who's had a crime podcast for many, many years, even when I read a story like this and have to share it, it still fascinates me that someone will even say, oh, well, you know, she threatened me this way, so... Came to the conclusion I have to kill her. Like, how crazy. At no point in time in my life have I ever been like, well, got to kill someone. Run them over with the car, but not kill them. That makes me feel a little bit better. Maybe at least he ain't going to kill me. So, I mean, can you imagine and then putting them in a trash bag and dumping them and then just going about your day, go back to work, clean it up, go back to work, go back to your family with two kids. I'm not real sure that I buy that it wasn't premeditated. No. Right. That it doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, that you would just, on the spur of a moment, whoosh, yeah. like, freak out like that? No. He was probably mad at her because she always went to the deli next door instead of his. Yeah. 
No. Man. I mean, even then, why would you kill someone? Right. Who Just cares? hold an internal vendetta. Or... Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, even at that point, you know, that should have came out during the trial about his mental state, but... I feel like he didn't get very long. No. Or... I think in the U.S. that... The U.K.? No, I know, but I think in the U.S., oh. if that would have happened here, he would have gotten a lot longer. He would have got a life. It, yeah, and maybe a death sentence if it I don't was know if they do the states. death sentence Not in typically. the U.K. anymore. No. Do they? No. Okay. No, no. I know the U.S. is one of the f- few countries that still do it. Yeah, well, world. and it's specific on states. Most states don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy Oof. case, though. My God. Absolutely. Absolutely bizarre. This 15-year-old girl... Threatened me and scared me, so I stabbed her 60-something times yeah, and, with several different... And you know different... what, what's even crazier? You know, of course, we all know that his story is, is a lie. But even if someone threatens you, oh, I'm going to tell people you assaulted me, no one will believe you unless you have proof. Right. And he has cameras in his store. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. So, right yeah, there. Uh, so, if, I mean, if someone was like, well, if you don't hire me, I'll tell people that you assaulted me. Okay, well, then I tell people I have camera and no, I didn't. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you, next. Definitely, I'm not you know? hiring you now. <laughs> right. So, none of it makes any sense. No. It's so bizarre. But And no 15-year-old girl's going to go work at a deli over a hair salon. Hair yeah. salons are fun. You get all the gossip. Right. Mm-hmm. You tell Josh used to work at a you hair salon. Get your hair washed for free. Right. If you're a man, you get all the waxing you want for free while everybody else... Oh, look, can I wax your eyebrows? I need the practice. <laughs> sure, although sometimes you come out looking a little surprised. <laughs> Not that I do a much better job. All right. All right, Josh, what do you have left for us? I have a... My bless your heart yeah, for give the it day. to us. In a groundbreaking medical achievement, a young boy from New Jersey has triumphed over sickle cell anemia... Thanks to an extraordinary medical breakthrough. Toby Okensande, a resilient five year old hailing from Hallworth, New Jersey, owes his newfound health to his younger brother, Kwasi, whom he lovingly acknowledges as his savior. Their father expressed profound gratitude, saying he definitely saved his life. Toby's battle with sickle cell anemia began when he was not even a year old. At that time, the condition was widely perceived as incurable. However, the family discovered a ray of hope in the form of curative therapy involving a bone marrow transplant, with the ideal donor being none other than his younger sibling. In a remarkable turn of events, just a year after receiving the life-changing bone marrow transplant from his one-year-old brother, Toby was officially declared free from the grip of sickle cell anemia for toby and his little brother and their whole family i give them all a big old bless your heart and hope you all stay healthy in the future that's such a good story josh and i also have a question for you when you look for these stories do you only find people's names that seem like they're hard to pronounce (laughs) no i i don't even look at their names usually i'm just like oh that's a nice story and then once i pick one it is actually a lot harder than I thought it would be to find some positive yeah. news. There, you know, there's like got my taxes done on time. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a whole bunch of just not bless your heart worthy yeah. good news out there, but positive news doesn't sell. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. That's why I don't like to watch the news because it's, it's all negative it's anxiety. Yes, and that's why I feel like bless your heart's important because we always hear about bad things mm-hmm. in the world. Yeah, that's good. Not enough good. Yeah. Now, if only people would report on some good stories about people with the name like John Smith. Smith. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Some easy pronouncing names. Right. I don't know why they're Pam. all difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I had to watch a news video just to figure out how to make sure I pronounce the last name correctly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, and Josh and I are notorious for mispronouncing names anyway. Okay. No. Sandy. Sandy's so. <laughs> what you talking about? I pronounce it just perfect every time. Yeah. Normally on my scripts that Kim edits, I'll give her like five pronunciations. Look this up, Kim, and see which one of them's yeah. right. But in my head, I can say it perfectly. And I will right before it comes out of my mouth. And in my head, I'm like, Okay, same day. 
And then out would I yeah. In my head, I look like The Rock, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a five foot I can see eight. the resemblance. Yeah. I look like Jessica Rabbit in my head. Well, you know somewhere. I play his body double in all his movies. Oh, are you his stunt double? I am, He's yeah. the rock stunt double, the boulder. <laughs> 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 I'm a stand-in, the clump. You are so funny, Josh. You I are try. just so I funny. Try. All right, guys, while we are wrapping up, and before Josh gives his last minute wrap up spiel, wrap up for you, we're gonna it. we're gonna tell you that you should join us on Unmasked today because dun, we dun, are dun, going dun. to return to our fun game that we made up. It's so fun. Oh, yeah. It is called Unmask the Imposter. And today I'm the one who is going to figure out if Josh or Kim is lying. And so they have both given me two names, and the names I have today are Kip and Lisa. And so Kip and Lisa are either friends with Josh or Kim, or they're both friends with Josh, or they're both friends with Kim. And so I'm going to ask them questions about both of these people and figure out who is the imposter, who is lying. Now, this Come might join be more us. Difficult it's going to be fun. It's with definitely, Kim. yeah, because I can't. Um, well, he grew up with me. He knows what I look like when I lie. <laughs> well, Kim's just going to be so nervous the whole time that I think that's what's going to throw it all off. Think, she's just going to be uh, like, <gasps> I had to de- dig deep to figure out a friend. I'm like, who? What, which one of my friends doesn't know who Shane? <laughs> I had to dig deep to find a friend. <laughs> right, right. Good, make a one. Oh, I'm just like, three. well, all my closest friends, you know, you've known them for the same amount of time right. that I have. All right. Josh. If any of these are Josh's friends, it's probably an imaginary friend. <laughs> Could be. I got plenty. <laughs> That's my boyfriend. He's my boyfriend. That's my husband. <laughs> he, we're so in love. <laughs> God bless me. Someone's got to. Oh, mm-hmm. as as the weather's getting colder, I do think sometimes. Do I want to be in a relationship? Mm. But the, every night when I get in my own bed without somebody else there, I think, no. No, yeah. I, I really don't. I don't, I don't well, even you know, ask myself you know that question you anymore. Do? You know what you could buy, Josh, though, if you were in a relationship? You know how they have those human-sized dog beds? Oh, yeah. They look like Just a bird nest. On. Yeah, make them sleep on the floor. How about getting bed. one of them human-sized love dolls? <laughs> well, not for loving, just to... Have you seen how they seen the ones that are made out of, not like the blow up dolls, but the ones that yeah, that's what I'm talking real, about. Like the yes, those the things silicone are, are looking. Rippy. And have you, I've watched how they make those too. Oh God, yeah. I don't even. Boy, Kim is getting in deep. She is. I was intrigued. Oh to... yeah, I'm sure. Is it coming this week? Happy Christmas. She's already got a name for it. No, it came last week. I don't. I'm know sure it did. And then she came this uh, week. <laughs> how you doing? That's why she's so chipper. <laughs> that is. Hey yeah, guys. No. She got that glow in her eyes. Uh-huh. No. Meanwhile, I put on 40 pounds. <laughs> 10 pounds every month. I've not been with a man. <laughs> and look how good you look. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. How lovely. Who knew water and food? Ah. Oh. Who crazy. knew? Is uh. that is that what Kim and I are doing? Gosh, dang it. And just what? Is, that, is that why we're so overweight? We keep eating. I switched up my diet of nicotine I gained and 10 caffeine. Pounds just looking at food, I don't oh, have I to eat it. Gosh, dang! I need to put a lock on the fridge. I love it though. I I used to when I was real in the grip of anorexia. If I would gain, you know, even just a few pounds, I would not eat hardly anything mm-hmm. for a week until I got back down. But now every time I weigh myself and I. See, even when I put my jeans on this morning, they were tied. I'm like, yeah. I have this mental image of you with your refrigerator locked now. With chains wrapped all around it and locks on it. I'm j- I can just picture you just going, Rah! and just. You know, I would do that, but it's cardio. That's true. If I needed to get into it. And I mean, you have to eat eventually. God, I, I have mean, so many snacks all eat. around my kitchen, just open. I, I have, believe that. I, I feel like every I time like I talk to you, I bought four bags eating. of Halloween candy when it went mm-hmm. on sale, and those Christmas tree little snack cakes are out now. Oh, mm-hmm. Been through two boxes of them, the little white Christmas tree and snack cakes. We wonder cakes. why he's picked up 40 pounds. No kidding. I <laughs> absolutely despise him. <laughs> I would love a Christmas tree, a little candy thing, but. 
can't be trusted. And I couldn't decide last night between a ding dong and one of those Christmas trees. So I had both. I'd like to hit you with a ding dong. <laughs> Oh, it sounds so good. I'd like to hit. I definitely would like to hit him too. And then that didn't I hit the spot, so I had six of them little twigs. I know. Kim is a diabetic, and Josh is like, "Oh, he'll eat that's all wh- the sugar." That's why I say it, just so yeah. you can live vicariously then I, then through I put me. Whipped cream on it and had some ice cream, then mm. fried it. Well, then I needed a salty, so I had some white cheddar. It's so, you know balance. But I had a diet coke. It's fine. It's no, I don't right. do diet. Ooh. <laughs> with Shane and I, God. we'll go to restaurants or whatever, and he'll get a big something kind of dessert and take a picture of it and Diet Coke, and then it's great. <laughs> I, <love> it. <laughs> I do like, though, your order dessert first thing. I've been utilizing that yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah, you don't be full and then can't right. do dessert. That's I'd rather the best take half my meal. sandwich or something home. Yeah, than, than right. Yeah. Exactly. Dessert's the best part. I wish I could just eat dessert. Well, don't be diabetic. Yeah, it's your own well, fault. Let me try that. <laughs> let me try, <laughs> let me try that. that out. Let me try that. Choose to not be diabetic, Kim. <laughs> no, choose to not be diabetic. No, That's like I need telling a honey me, bun. choose to not be tall, Shane. Choose to not be tall. I now can't. he wants a honey bun. We're talking about you being diabetic. <sighs> I, I want a honey bun now. Emily had made a some kind of a some kind of a cheesecake, and they put a piece of it in the freezer for me. I ate a little bit of it. Oh, it so you know how many listeners right now are like, hey, you know, I'm going to get me a little sweet Yeah, I'm going to get me a little something. I need a little uh-huh. snacky snack. I need a little a sweet. Little mm-hmm. <laughs> they're going to turn this off just because they're like, man, I can't listen I know. To I put on 10 pounds <laughs> just, just listening listen to this dang podcast. That's me. That's me. I listen <laughs> I listen to you guys talk about food. I right. gain weight. Everybody, especially it's towards the end, they're going to turn it off and be like, you know, I could go honey bun. Don't mm-hmm. sound bad. <laughs> All right, Charles, give us the end. Oh, we would like to give. <laughs> I really can just turn it right on, All can right. I? <laughs> we would like to give a special thank you, Jesus, to our loyal and brilliant patrons and your exceptional taste in podcast. We appreciate all of you and hope that you enjoy Unmasked. Don't forget to follow Mystery Inc. on Instagram or join us on Patreon to hear our bonus episodes of Unmasked that we do right after we get back from the bathroom. Find us on both platforms under at It's Mystery Inc. You can also join us on Facebook at Shane and Josh's Rabbit Hole so we can interact more with all of you. Yeah. I love how you always put after we get back from the bathroom. Because it's true. It's so true. I like to be, you, know, you know me, reporting. honesty is uh-huh. the best policy. Uh-huh. Unless they ask you how many people you've been with. Then you uh-huh. ain't. Till. That's then... in the Lord's hands. <laughs> 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 I didn't know you were supposed to count. No one ever told me that. I lost count. I just remember the memories. <laughs> Sure. We got into this type of a conversation with my daughter and, you know, wanting to know how many people you'd been with. And I sit there and I thought for a minute and thought for a minute and thought for a minute. And she's like, Mom, you, you have to think about it. <laughs> well, yeah. Bless your heart, Cam. Just another drop in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> well, your answer should have just been, well, I've been married once. Yep, been married That's once. You All you got to do is remember the good ones because they're the only ones that count. There you go. <laughs> Shoot, uh, maybe I, I don't have any then. <laughs> bad. There was a couple that wasn't bad. There you go. Oh, <laughs> scroll down. We also have a new website. It's mysteryinc.com. There you can listen to any of our episodes, enjoy photos of us and Kim, mm. and even submit ideas for mysteries or any positive news that you would like to share for Bless Your Heart. Yeah. I'm still waiting on a better picture to be put on. Well, you're going to be waiting for a long time. Can you keep pressing this? He's going to put two bad pictures on there. You've met him. (laughs) Oh, yeah. A long time ago. I'm going to sneak a photo when she gets out of the bathroom one day. She's looking for that toilet paper. It's best to just ignore it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I ignore him quite a bit. All right, guys. Let's start the unmask. Hope you enjoyed the special two-hour episode (laughs) of Uh, Mystery. Yeah, hour and 45 minutes. That's hilarious. (laughs) Don't judge me on my poop story. (laughs) Have a good week, everybody. And if you want more time with us, come on over. Unmask. You want three hours of us. (laughs) I need some deodorant. I'll talk to you all later. Bye. Bye. Bye.